Hello everyone, welcome to the session. So in this particular session, we will talk about bubble sort. So let's get started. Here, if you will see on the blackboard, I have taken some random set of data elements that I have in my array. Okay. Now, as you can see that these are not in a sorted fashion. Our target is to reach to a point where we want our array in a increasing order. Okay. So by default index will start from zero that we already are aware of all these facts. So zero, one, two, then three, then four, then five and then six. So here, this is the array elements that we have. Okay. So we are having in total seven number of elements. Right. Now, how basically this bubble sort will work. Try to understand the approach behind that. Okay. That's the only thing that you have to take from the session. Okay. So basically what is happening is that it will try to compare the consecutive two elements. And if suppose the upfront element means the, the one element is higher as comparable to the pre uh, next one. For example, in this particular case, if you will see 70 is greater than 20, right? So what it will try to do is that it will try to do the swap. It will try to do the swap. So basically what will happen is that in the first pass, in the pass number one, when you have the original array, what will happen is that the two elements will start comparing with each other. So 70 and 20 will do the comparison and as 70 is greater than 20, so there will be a swap. So what will happen is that 20 will come here and 70 will come here, right? Now the 70 and the 50 will do the comparison and here because again the value of 70 is greater than 50, we have to make it sorted in an in a increasing fashion. It means that we should have the greater element towards the right extreme but it's not so. So again there will be a swap. So 50 will come here and 70 will come here. Now again 70 and 30 there will be a comparison. 30 will come here and 70 will come here. Again 70 and 90 there will be a comparison and now it is fine. Why? Because 70 is somehow lesser than 90 so it is fine. There will be no swap which is required in this part. Now in the next iteration 90 and 5 will get compared up and here you can see again there will be a swap which is required because the value 90 is greater than 5. Again 90 and 15 will get compared up and here again 90 value is somehow greater than 15. So here 15 will come here and 90 will come here. So in the very first pass, pass number 1, how your array will look like? It will be 20 followed by 50 followed by 30 followed by 70 followed by 5 followed by 15 followed by 90. So here you are having a set of elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So here we are having 7 elements in this kind of fashion where if you will see try to observe here this element will be actually at its own location 90 after fully sorting of this array also will be located at sixth index because this is the highest element that we have inside our array so what will happen is that in the next iteration what i will do is that i will try to get rid of that last element in the first pass and i'll just do the same thing for the remaining elements now what will happen again the same thing you have to do 20 and 50 will get compared up. These are fine because 20 value is less than 50. We will move ahead 50 and 30. Again, there will be a swap which is required because 50 is greater than 30. Again, 50 and 70 is fine. 70 and 5, swap will be required. 70 and 15, again, swap will be required. So, after pass number 2, what kind of array you will be able to get? You will get the value as 20 followed by 30 followed by 50 followed by 5 followed by 15 followed by 70 followed by 90. So here if you will try to see you are having 
these elements where again if I will write the index number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Here again if you will see in the second pass the last second element will be its own position means even I will complete my sorting of these complete remaining elements as well 70 will remain its own actual position means at index 5. It means that what you are observing that at each and every iteration for example the first iteration one element is sorted second iteration last two elements are actually sorted. Now what will happen is that in the next iteration you will only work for these many elements. Again let me try to work for this 20 and 30 already fine 30 and 50 already fine 50 and 5 no because 50 is somehow greater than 5 so I need to do swap here 5 will be here 50 will be here again 50 and 15 there should there should be a, a swap which is required because 50 is greater than 15 so 15 will come here and 50 will come here so after pass number 3 in pass number 3 what you will get you will get the value as 20 followed by 30 followed by 5 followed by 15 followed by 50 followed by 70 followed by 90 so this is a set of elements that you will be able to get again let me try to write the index number 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 here again if you will see at pass number 3 last third element is its own position means what I want to convey here is that in bubble sort at each and every pass the next higher element will be located at the extreme end at first pass the largest element will be at the last index in the second pass you will get the second largest element at its last second index in the third pass you will get a third largest element at its last third index and so on now the same thing you need to do for the remaining elements that is from 20 to 15 now again what will happen 20 30 is fine 30 and 5 not fine because 30 is greater than 5 so 5 and 30 will get swapped with each other 30 and 15 is also not fine so again a swap will be required now again what array you will be able to get at pass number 4 you will be able to get an array which is 20 which is 5 let me erase the bracket brackets first so it is 20 it is 5 it is uh, 15 right it is 30 it is 50 it is 70 it is 90 again let me write the index number it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and as you can see the last four elements at pass number four will be its own position now we need to take care of the remaining elements at the starting three elements are only there so now what you can do is that again you will look for 20 and 5 a swap will be required so 5 will be here and 20 will be here again 20 and 15 swap will be required 15 will be here and 20 will be here right so at pass number 5 what you will be able to get is you will be able to get the value as uh, 5 followed by 15 so let me erase this brackets here again 5 15 20 30 50 70 and 90 again if I will write the index number it will be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 here if you will try to see again the last five elements are in their sorted fashion so now we need to look for only the first two elements that we have and if you will observe these two elements are already uh, in a correct sequence there is no need to do the swap so after pass number six finally you will be able to get a sorted array actually at pass number five itself it's sorted but anyhow when we do the comparison we will or our system will get to know that it's already in a sorted fashion and it will print this as an final output so this is the final sorted array that you can see is there 5 15 20 30 50 70 and 90 and yes it's sorted it's in an increasing fashion whatever we want is there 
here if you will see what we have observed is that the very first point here we have observed that so here what i can write is that points to note now there are few important points that we observe from this approach what are those important points the very first point here to understand is that here if you will observe that when we are having the number of elements as 7 so in worst case scenario we will we will go until the pass number 6 what does that indicate that if you have n number of elements in worst case scenario how many number of iterations or how many number of pass you need to do in the bubble sort it will be n minus 1 number of passes which are required the second important point here to understand is that if suppose someone is asking to you that in bubble sort in worst case scenario how many number of comparisons are required here please note that i am always talking about worst case scenario because as i already talked about uh, this in the analysis portion as well that in all the upcoming sessions our major focus is to optimize the worst case scenario if we will be able to optimize that worst case scenario automatically other scenarios will be covered up right if a person will be able to optimize or if a person will be able to handle the worst situation in, in his or her life automatically he will be able to handle the average and the best situation in his or her life that's the same rule which i am applying here so in worst case scenario if suppose someone is talk talking to you and saying to you that can you tell me how many number of comparisons are required in worst case scenario how many number of comparisons are required you need to find out the number of comparisons so here if you will try to observe at each and every time what we are saying is that suppose here we are having n elements so at first pass we get rid of n we are having n minus 1 elements to compare now as i already told you that the last element is already at its own location and then we try to compare with n minus 1 elements here we are comparing with n minus 2 elements here we are trying to compare with n minus 3 elements here until so on we are only left with a single element only single comparison at the very end what i want to say here is that that you are started you are starting from n minus 1 then n minus 2 comparisons left n minus 3 comparisons left at the very end it will be like 3 plus 2 plus 1 what is this when we talked about the simple sum of n natural numbers when we talked about the sum of n natural numbers what is that i hope everyone knows this thing uh, i'm not expecting anyone to not know this apart this will be n into n plus 1 divided by 2 right now what is this thing this is nothing but n minus 1 natural uh, sum of n minus 1 natural numbers so instead of placing n here you need to just place the value as n minus 1 so it will be n minus 1 into n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 or can i write it as n into n minus 1 divided by 2 so in worst case scenario what's the higher exponential term that we have it will be n square so can i say that in worst case scenario in big o it will be big o of n square so the number of comparisons complexity will be coming out to be order of n square third important point where we are looking for is the number of swaps that we are doing here because in bubble sort the majorly what we are doing is that we are doing only two task one is the swapping another one is the comparison these two are the key important things which we are doing in a bubble sort so let's talk about the swaps here also if i'll talk about the best case scenario how many swaps are required in best case there will be no swap required it might be the case that the array is in a sorted fashion or is in an increasing fashion and somehow you are not requiring any kind of a swap so i can say that at that point of time it means in a best case you might need only i would say uh n sorry zero swaps right only zero swaps are required but what will be the worst case scenario worst case scenario will be exactly the same 
which is equal to the number of comparisons required it means initially i am having n minus 1 comparisons and i am i am doing n minus 1 swaps then n minus 2 n minus 3 until until 1 again we will be able to form up the same series which is equals to n into n minus 1 by 2 right that the number of comparisons equals to the number of swaps in worst case scenario it means again while talking about the swaps it will be equals to order of n square so directly without looking into the coding part only just theoretical understanding only with the help of this only you will be able to get an idea that what should be the overall time complexity of the bubble sort here if you will see bubble sort is basically doing two heavy operations one is something which is comparison and after doing the comparison it is looking that whether a swap is required or not if i will talk about the bigger time complexity of comparisons it will be order of n square for swap also it will be o of n square it means anyhow this bubble sort will be done in order of n square time complexity Another way to determine the same thing is with the help of writing the code means while doing the implementation for the same concept that we have just studied in this session and that I will show you in my next video. So what we will do in our next class we will try to see the implementation in that implementation straightforward if you will look for the loops how many loops are working internally to do the implementation for the bubble sort you will be clearly able to get an idea there is not even a need for me to explain you about the time complexity part after I will be able to write the code but before that make sure that because you already know the logic behind bubble sort now right you just need to apply two for loops one is I which will take care this is I which will take care of the first element because we are always always comparing the two elements first one and j will be the next element of i which is i plus one so you can try to write the code or the implementation for the bubble sort i am expecting that if you already aware about the python programming language and if you already understood the complete approach about the bubble sort it will be very easy for you to write the code and again once you will be able to write the code you can take the same array which I have taken here even I will take the same array in my implementation class and you your output should be this only the way we are getting this output here once you will be able to write the implementation automatically you will be able to understand the time complexity part which is coming out to be order of n square because you will observe that you are applying two for loops there right so Try to do it on your own because the more you practice the coding part, the more you will be able to get the confidence and more skilled you are in DSA. That is the only mantra I would say in order to be best in this, in this domain particularly. So that is the overall idea behind the bubble sort. I think I have given you all a complete picture where we have talked about the complete overall analysis of this bubble sort. Are we using any extra space here in order to implement the same? Are we using this? No. I am doing all the operations internally in the same array. That's why here if you will see when we talked about the space complexity here we are talking about the time complexity. If I will talk about the space complexity part. So as such we are not using any kind of extra space. That's why the same space complexity will be equals to order of 1 means we are using a constant space as such. Afterwards, uh, it's a in-place sorting algorithm. In other words, I can say, right? And is it a comparison-based or non-comparison-based? Obviously, here we are trying to compare the elements within an array, right? I am comparing 70, 20, then I am doing a swap. Then I am comparing maybe uh, 70, 50. Again, I am doing a swap. So what I'm doing is that I'm trying to compare all the elements within, with, within an array. That's why it's a, it, it is coming under a category of a comparison based sorting algorithm that you all know. What does that mean? I have already explained, but it's just for the demonstration purpose, because now you know the approach behind this bubble sort. 
I have already explained the complete approach. That's why I am relating all those points which we have covered up in our previous videos. I hope that it's making sense to everyone. If you still have any sort of doubt, do let me know. Otherwise, I think I have made it, made it pretty much clear to everyone. We will try to, try to do the implementation in the next session. But before that, as I told you, please try it on your own. Happy learning to all. Bye-bye everyone. See you soon in my next upcoming video.